Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, forging a katana. Okay, so right off the bat, I have to apologize. You know, most of the time I make a really strong attempt to have lots of close-ups, to have really high quality audio. You know, basically I hate these videos where some dude sets up a camera in the back of his shop and tries to talk over a whole bunch of loud machinery. Well, guess what? Today I'm going to do exactly that. And here's why. Basically, I'm just going to set up the camera on my anvil and you're going to get to watch every hammer blow as I forge a katana. So. Uh, the audio is going to suck and that's just the way it is, but you're going to get to see that whole process all the way through. All right. So now let me clarify a couple things about what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, this steel has already been forge welded and folded. So I folded, uh, the, the steel into a billet. Then I drew that billet out, uh, and forged it into what's known as a sunobe, which is, uh, that's the Japanese word basically for sort of a preform. So all of that work has already been done. So we've got folded steel and we've got it in the form that's just ready for the final uh, forging. So that's what I'm going to show here. This is kind of the fun part. All the preliminary uh, forging is in many ways more important, but it's not as cool looking. So we're going to show you the cool part today. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hot cut this on a bias like that. So you would think from looking at it that if I'm cutting it this way, that that's going to be the point and this will be the belly of the blade, the edge of the blade, but actually it's not that way. What's going to happen is that this whole piece is going to get forged back up this way, and that way the grain of the um, steel layers will run this way, and that creates a more pleasing pattern uh, as it runs up to the point. Maybe uh, an inch and an eighth right there. So 
maybe not quite that, uh, but, but pretty close. And that'll give you a good solid taper. Now, there's no set taper for a Japanese sword. Some taper more than others. Um, and, uh, you know, this is just one that feels kind of comfortable to me. And, it, you know, it's pretty much in the range of traditionally uh, shaped katanas. So, I've got a nice and straight there, and that's going to keep me from having this little divot in there that I was talking about. So, now I'm going to forge the point itself.
not really there quite yet, but it starts to get.
very subtle corrections working my way back down towards the end of the, uh, of the blade. But of course, I'm going to come back at the end and make all kinds of very, very subtle little corrections to get it exactly where I want it at the end. You know, I'm not completely happy with this at this point, you know, some little transitions and all that. All that gets cleaned up at the end. So there we go. I guess this is the fourth section. closer to the tang, the blade starts to get a lot hotter. Uh, and at a certain point I'm going to have to transition to tongs. I hate using tongs. If you're using tongs on a knife that's yay long, then you're able to put a lot of leverage on it. But a really long blade like this, you'll see it moves around. I, I just don't have any leverage because I'm holding it way out here and so it tends to move this way much more each time I hit it with the hammer, it tends to move much more than it would uh, if it were a shorter blade. That's only exaggerated by using tongs, which decrease your control. So I try to stay away from tongs for as long as I can, but probably by the time I hit the next heat, I'm going to have to jump to the tongs.
after it cools down, then I'll be able to hold it by this end, and I'll finish up the, the cargo. And so that's it. Uh, what we've got right here is the final result. So one of the interesting things about Japanese swords is that the differential hardening process, also known as clay hardening or whatever, um, causes the sword to bend in the course of the quench. It really happens in about three or, three or four seconds. It's an amazing thing to watch, but from a Smith's perspective, it's kind of frustrating because you can never predict exactly how that curvature is going to work. All you can do is, based on your experience, give a rough guesstimate of where it's going to go. And so when you look at this blade, you're actually not seeing what its final shape is going to be. You're seeing my guess as to what I have to do now in order to have it sort of preformed so that once it makes that curve, in the quench, I get something that has a pleasing curvature. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, you know, uh, the, the quality of the audio stinks in this video, but I hope that we've made up for it by giving you a chance to see just that whole overview of everything that I did uh, to forge this into shape. Hey, if you don't like this, give me a little feedback and, uh, you know, we won't do it again. But uh, I thought it was worth uh, giving a shot to and, uh, you know, let me know what you think. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades, and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.